Have you ever asked the question, how does a computer know to search what I want to search, email, text message, call, take a picture? Is it voodoo? Magic? Is there something that this computer isn't telling us? Dude, yes? How many times do I have to tell you to stop yelling at your computer? <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Um, well, to be honest, the synthesis of math and physics to create the computer is much simpler than you might think. Back before microtechnology was possible, computers used a wacky device called a vacuum tube, which was a glass tube that was purged of all gases inside to control the flow of electrons inside a computer. However, a breakthrough was later found and kicked vacuum tubes to the curb. Fast forward to 1961 when two electrical engineers, Jack Kilby and Robert Noyce, found that the 14th element silicon was able to be manufactured with impurities to perform the exact same function as a vacuum tube, but take up significantly less volume due to its semiconductor properties. This breakthrough led to producing computers that were significantly smaller, including the phone in your pocket. The device created by the silicon chip is now called the transistor, an electronic component that controls the flow of electricity through a circuit. Okay, that's dope and all, but like, what's that got to do with making phones capable of anything? Excellent question. Computers use simple inputs called bits to control the flow of electrons. A simple number system called binary was created to track the change in storage of bits in a computer. Binary gets its name from simply consisting of two numbers, zero and one, zero being off and one being on, much like a light switch has an off and on position respectively. A transistor is much like a light switch of an electronic circuit. When one is given an input of zero or it is turned off, an output bit that passes through the transistor is also zero or off. Therefore, when a transistor is given an input bit of one or it is turned on, the output bit is also one. Variations of a transistor called gates allow for more complicated electron control as they may require one or more input bits to create an output bit. The combination of bits and gates allow computers to store a group of bits called a byte in a location called memory, where the computer can read certain bytes that pertain to certain electrical instructions or overwrite old ones. And much like your brain has a memory and processing component, so does a computer, commonly referred to as a central processing unit or CPU. Both the CPU and memory can direct, modify, read thousands of bits at a time that we consider to be instructions. Instructions that tell your computer how to start, create video, send a text message, and many other functions. These two concepts are allow a pocket-sized device to do basically anything. No, it's not voodoo or magic, it's just bits and a whole lot of silicon. Thanks for watching.